Well, this is exciting. A big milestone this morning for NASA as the agency celebrates the one year anniversary of its James Webb Space Telescope. Okay, it's considered the most powerful telescope in NASA's arsenal, so to speak, getting us up close to stars thousands of miles away. Here this morning is Lee Feinberg, the manager of the Webb Telescope. Good morning. Thank you for joining us here on Houston's Morning Show. Well, thank you for having me. Well, I've actually heard the Webb Telescope referred to as a time machine. Can you tell us what that means? Well, it actually does allow us to look back in time. Um, and we're seeing actually a, a period of time in the universe that we've never really seen before in detail. And that's because it's taken the light over 13 billion years to get here. The universe had this large explosion in the beginning, the Big Bang, and light from the very edges of the universe are just getting to us but they're from a period of time that was very early, a few hundred million years uh, after the universe formed. And we're seeing the very first stars and galaxies, how they formed and what, how, how large they were. And we're comparing them against to what was predicted. Wow. <laughs> wow. I mean, I'm, I'm speechless. I can't even think straight yeah. now. So tell us, what are some of the favorite things that you found so far? What are some of the things that just make you just go nuts when you see it? Well, you know, part of it was just seeing the first really deep images of the universe. I mean, Hubble had done the same thing. Hubble, the Hubble Space Telescope is very complementary to Webb, but Webb is seeing longer wavelengths, the infrared wavelengths, and farther back in time. And in 12 hours, Webb's very first deep field, the first image of the deep universe, it had already gone deeper than Hubble had ever seen. And we're seeing an incredible number of galaxies. The universe is just covered in galaxies. Um, and we're seeing these early objects that are not exactly as we expected. And so we're really trying to map out how did things form and, and how did it evolve. That, that for me is really, uh, you know, it's why we built this telescope. It's what it was designed to do. And at the same time, we're studying things like our, you know, planets in our own solar system. We're seeing the rings of Uranus and Neptune for the first time in decades and seeing weather patterns on the moons of these planets, uh, you know, like Jupiter and, and, and Saturn. And we're actually going to be helping future NASA missions to understand uh, the climate and the weather on some of these systems as we plan some of our future missions. Well, it probably has to be too scientific for us to even comprehend. And it's really not a fair question to ask, but how? How in the world can it make us see all these things? Well, you know, part of it is just it's a much larger telescope than we've ever had in space and it sees these longer wavelengths than Hubble can see. So if you sort of think of the rainbow, mm -hmm. we're at the sort of red end of the rainbow and then in, and then there's light you, your eyes can't see. Um, but but what happens, what actually happened in the, with the light from the early universe, it starts like light that we see like the sun, but literally the universe expanded and it stretches the light on its way here. It's stretching the fabric of, the, of what they call space time and that stretches the light into the infrared. And that's why we're able to see these very early objects. Mm -hmm. I know it's really complicated, but um, but it's it's worth actually exploring these images, and you start to appreciate visually what we're seeing. Wow. Well, tell us about this newer image. How does this how does this make everyone on the team feel when you see that? Well, you know, every one of these images wow. from Webb, are, you know, they, they have a certain level of beauty. You know, the, the universe is unbelievably beautiful, which is you know something that we have sort of seen before but we're getting into more detail and it's it's really amazing but at the same time you know in this particular case this new image that was just released this morning we're seeing the closest star forming region to our own solar system and we're seeing sort of in a way sort of how our own sun formed because this is a cloud of dust and gas and there's 50 baby stars in this image that we're seeing forming out of that dust and clouds what happens is the dust starts to clump up and the clouds clump up and they they collapse within their from their own gravity mm. and they Amazing. ignite a star all right yeah. it's incredible almost look like an angel i thought right. all right thank you so much for joining us it's a truly fascinating we'll be right back